Hi, I've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, the 1st of August. And here in the Atlantic, our main feature of interest is going to be Invest 99L over here in the Central Atlantic. We still have this wave that moved out in front into the Caribbean. And uh, as you can see, thunderstorm activity has weakened with it during the last couple of days. And this is now spreading out north and south of the island chain and is no significant threat for development as expected. This will bring random showers and thunderstorms to the islands as it heads northwest and uh, ends up becoming absorbed into the pattern and it's not a big deal. Over here though, we're still we're watching this system and this is starting to become a little bit better better organized here. If we zoom in on it, it's still hard to tell via satellite alone exactly where the low level circulation is trying to develop, but it looks like it could be somewhere along the northern edge of this convective mass, which itself is not that well organized yet. It has been persistent over the last couple of days uh, with the moderate to deep convection, but it is not very round or very organized looking as of yet, and uh, it would be nice to get a good pass from the satellite to see what the surface wind are doing underneath here. We haven't had a good one since uh, yesterday, uh, but it's still somewhat attached to the intertropical convergence zone. And here you can see the massive clouds to its west, and there's a large lobe of vorticity extending out to its southwest, which we'll see in a little bit. And uh, until it gets detached fully from this, it's going to be hard to form closed circulation. And until we get definitive evidence of that, the Hurricane Center is unlikely to upgrade this to a tropical depression, but it may very well become a tropical depression fairly soon, perhaps late tonight into tomorrow. I think it needs a little more time to get detached from the intertropical convergence zone first, but of course the call will be up to the NHC and we will see what they do here. But it does have the look of something that's trying to detach gradually as it moves west-northwest and wrap itself up and become a more well-defined entity. The problem with detaching from the intertropical convergence zone is that although it allows the system to develop, it also opens it up to vulnerabilities that it did not have before. For example, the dry air lingering to the north here, lurking, waiting to get drawn into the circulation of this as soon as it detaches and loses the protection of the moist environment that it is currently in. Uh, this may become a problem, but should not uh, completely destroy the system once it detaches, at least at first. As this nears the islands, it should be gradually becoming better organized right up until it enters the Caribbean. After it enters the Caribbean, uh, things may change a little bit. Now as this stands, we're probably going to get a very nice look at this from the Barbados radar. Barbados is the island right here as this enters through the southern half of the Lesser Antilles, looks like where this is likely to go, depending on exactly where the low level center develops, probably entering the Caribbean here. And it is going to go into the Caribbean, it looks like now. Most of the models have shifted south here. A lot of them were going north of the Caribbean island chain a couple of days ago, have since shifted south. Again, the intensity of this has played a large role in the track so far as it hasn't exploded in development and uh, has not been able to move as far north as it could have so this is probably going to be a Caribbean tracker. Now there are some things the storm is going to struggle with as it enters enters the Caribbean. Even if it is a named tropical storm or Nesto, upon entry through the islands here, it's going to have a hard time in the central Caribbean with the strong trade winds that are going to uh, hinder the development of its circulation. Right now the trade winds are a little lighter in here just because we have this large tropical wave moving through, uh, but there's high pressure building in behind this wave and 99L is going to be stuck to the south of this high pressure and strong trade winds are going to redevelop in the central Caribbean that will cause problems. In addition, there's still a lot of sinking air in this region of the world. There's not a lot of thunderstorm activity, and uh, via the GFS analysis here, there's still not very many green colors over here. In fact, there's none, and the green colors are what represent upward motion. The brown colors indicate downward motion or sinking air, and this is what we have, and it actually gets worse on the day five forecast here with lots of orange showing up, indicating that the MJO is not supportive of uh, thunderstorm activity in this area of the world. So this is going to be kind of a lone wolf system for a while. By day 10, uh, if we have the system more up and more up in the Western Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico, things may improve a little bit as the MJO moves towards Octant 8, uh, but that's a long ways away. And for the time being, it's going to start. Here's the 200 millibar winds and 850 millibar vorticity. You can see the nice little bomb of color here near the center of where 99L is trying to develop, but you can see again this little lobe of vorticity extending to the southwest of the circulation, indicating that it is still somewhat attached to the intertropical convergence zone, and that will be a struggle for it until it detaches there and is able to form 
a nice tight ball of its own, but it is getting better organized. This vorticity has been increasing and becoming more symmetric with time, indicating an organizing system. Now we have an upper level trough and associated low to the northwest of the system, tut like, and uh, this is imparting some wind shear out of the southwest over the northern part of the system, and this will be suppressing it just a little bit as it moves towards the Caribbean. This tut is supposed to expand and cover the area north of the central and eastern Caribbean during the next few days, indicating that uh, there may be some shear uh, in the northern Caribbean that may be impeding the system with time, may be yet another struggle. But the interesting part about having this tut expand to the west here is that if we look at what happens, here's the GFS Ensemble mean 250 millibar wind day 8. Notice the tut expands to the west and uh, this is uh, going to be imparting wind shear on the eastern Caribbean but the thing about these tuts is if you can break through on the other side of them conditions can rapidly become more favorable. Right now uh, if this forecast verifies the tut is in a good position that upper level ridging could easily expand over to the west of the tut axis and cause uh, very favorable conditions to develop in the western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico region in the long term. If our system survives the central and eastern Caribbean and ends up missing uh, the first part of Central America and gets into the Western Caribbean later on, uh, it could encounter a more favorable environment as the MJO gets closer to coming and supporting the area with upward motion and this tut axis ends up of ventilating this region here as upper level ridging develops, we could have a situation where this could survive and uh, not fully die off and cause some problems down the road, whether it's remnants or it actually manages to remain a designated system if we end up naming it, uh, could get into this area. And something like this could happen. This is the FIM model, uh, which is going to be replacing the GFS in the future but it's still in experimental stage. Notice that it's fairly weak here with the system as it comes in south of Jamaica in six days. This is a barely a tropical depression, if, uh, if, it, if at all, here on the model. But it stays pretty weak. In fact, it weakens a little bit from the state that it has it coming into the islands, and it, it illustrates the fact that this is probably going to struggle in this area. But once it gets west of Jamaica's longitude, watch what happens. It actually strengthens quite a bit coming in towards Central America here uh, by day nine. And this is the kind of situation that we might have to watch for if uh, this strengthens enough to survive the first part of the Caribbean and ends up uh, finding itself in a favorable environment in the second portion. And uh, right now, uh, too much too far away yet to speculate on exactly where in this region of the world the disturbance could end up. We still need to see it develop, see it enter the Caribbean, see where the low level center focuses, and whether it actually is going to survive a trek through the central Caribbean without completely becoming absorbed into the trade wind flow, and then uh, we may have to discuss what happens with it after that. Uh, the GFS ensemble mean 500 millibar chart at day 10 shows the trough still over the eastern US, but it's not terribly strong. So if we have a storm trying to move into the Western Caribbean, it's uncertain whether it's going to try to turn north or move straight into Central America. At this time, it will depend on a lot of things, and this is still fairly far out, but the possibilities are there. Uh, the pattern this season certainly favors storms that start coming farther north and farther west because of the pattern that we have with the El Nino this year. So if it gets into this region, uh, we may have to watch uh, for some significant development because we are in August and these waters are very warm now so if we get a favorable environment aloft it could become a problem but we have to get it to survive the trek through the Caribbean first it's going to have a hard time coming through here it could still die altogether uh, depending on how well organized it is coming in and uh, in a couple of days here Friday Saturday we're going to be bringing tropical storm like conditions into the lesser Antilles especially the southern half and uh, Barbados will probably be getting these first and uh, not anything terribly significant to deal with and we may get this named Ernesto eventually here as uh, time progresses so we will keep a close eye on this and we shall see what happens alright that's it for today thanks for watching